These look terrifying. In this video, we're going deep inside India's northeast to experience some of this country's wildest. Those are very dangerous. Don't touch that one. Most exotic food selections. Can you eat it like this? Yes. Really? Let's see it. This is the state of Assam. Last time, we tasted pigeon curry in Assam's capital, Guwahati. It's almost like eating honeycomb. Like, you have to chew the whole thing, suck out the flavor, and then spit out the rest. Now, we're leaving the big city and heading to the countryside, where you'll find a completely different way of life. Aside from growing crops and raising livestock, some locals have developed a taste for more affordable, more available protein sources. This is my first time seeing them this close. It's shocking. Bugs pests, and insects, a beloved local menu that would make most Indians cringe. It was wagging its little tail a second ago. Now it's here and we're ready to try it. Let's go. As for me, well, I'm here to try them all. But first, breakfast. This is a carb attack. Is this a usual breakfast for you? Yes. I feel like this is a whole week of breakfast options on one plate. Usually we don't mind carbs in our uh, breakfast. To start the day, something familiar. It's called pita. We already tried some in Guwahati, oh, yeah. but it turns out pita comes in many shapes and sizes. Here, they start with the local glutinous rice flour and coconut water. Next, an intense steaming in the pressure cooker. Mm. Mm. It's sweet. That's like dessert. Yeah. Also on the menu, ladu. Ladu is my favorite Hindi word. It means balls. <laughs> Nice. They can be made soft and tender using grated coconut and condensed milk. Or there's a harder version that uses semolina flour and grated coconut. Oh, that's nice. Very sweet, also coconutty, but more dry. Delightful. Sticky rice. Now, I'm a huge fan of sticky rice. You can find it all over Southeast Asia. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen it before in India. Is sticky rice popular in Assam? Very popular, Very especially popular. in uh, festive seasons. Last of all, right here, we have the dal. If you know Indian food, then you know dal, simmered, usually pureed spiced lentils or pulses. Here, they flavor the lentils with turmeric and chilies. To soak up that dal, we've got puri, another Indian staple made with wheat flour. I already know that puri is gonna be so good, just that delicious, thin, flaky fried bread with the dal. Mmm. The dal is nice. It's got just that beanie stew texture to it. So you don't usually eat meat with breakfast, huh? Heavy ho is that Oh, heavy ho It's too heavy for them to eat meat every day. Oh, really? Yeah. It's so interesting how everybody sees food differently and affects them differently. For me, if I ate five eggs and two sausages for breakfast, I feel great. For me, if I eat this for breakfast, it tastes good, but I'll feel terrible. What's interesting about this breakfast is this is the most normal thing we're going to be eating all day. One of my goals in coming to Assam is to learn more about the unique diet and culture of the food here. And one thing a lot of people eat in Assam is bugs. Yeah, they do apparently. Apparently, aren't you from Assam? <laughs> <laughs> Meet Padma. Her extended family lives here, but she lives in Assam's capital of Guwahati, working as a travel agent. Many of the more exotic countryside food she's aware of, but she's never tried them for herself. Do people from North India, are they curious about the bug eating? No, no they're no, no, very no. skeptical about it. Even when they come to Northeast India, they're like, what kind of food will we get there? I have to completely ensure them that, yes, you will get normal mm. food here. Why are folks in the countryside eating bugs? Because, you know, it's very available. If it was available in the cities, I would have it too, like every the Northeast region is known for its biodiversity and its wide-ranging cuisine. Assam alone is home to more than 45 different tribes and ethnic groups, many using insects as a sustainable source of protein, a tradition that goes back to ancient times. Are people collecting bugs themselves? Yeah, when they do go fishing, their main purpose is to get the fishes, but they get the bugs too. So why not have them when they are delicious? Exactly. Then if you catch no fish, at least you have some, what kind of bug? Water beetles. Some water beetles. Ants as well. Ants? Yeah, red yeah. ants with their eggs. What about grasshoppers? We do. We do. This leads me to you. You have an interesting side hustle. Across from me, Amrit. You basically have a silkworm farm here. Yeah. You have silkworms, they make a cocoon, and from the cocoon you're developing silk. And so you're selling silk, but what do you do with the worm? Let me show you. Does your wife ever come in here? No, no, I'm not getting married. Have you thought about getting married? Let's see. <laughs> okay. How does it begin? First, I have to buy eggs. After eight or nine days, it will hatch to larval stage. The worms are fed a steady diet of mulberry leaves. And after four weeks of feasting, they become plump and juicy. How long until this one wraps a cocoon? Around seven days. Have you ever held a worm? No. Oh, here, hold this one. <laughs> okay. It's cute though. It, very cute. Can you eat this as a larva? No. I don't know if I'm sad or relieved. It turns out in some Indian states, folks do cook up these silkworms while they're still in this larva state. Though for Amrit here, that would be career suicide. 
When the worms are plump and the time is right, they enter the pupa stage, where they spit, spin, and wrap a protective cocoon around themselves, in turn creating one of the world's most coveted raw materials, silk. When the cocoon is almost finished, it's a pupa, it's not quite a moth, then what do you do? That is valuable. Silk is an important industry in Assam, as they're one of the largest exporters of silk in the world. To make one dress from worm silk, you may need up to 2,000 cocoons just like this one. But what about the pupa? Pupa, we consume it. Sometimes if it is in large quantity, then we slowly sell it down. It's both used for making clothing, but also it's something you can eat. Yeah. That's fantastic. Have you ever eaten the pupa? When I was a child. Oh, so it's been some time. I don't remember the taste. Do you have a special recipe for the pupa? Yeah. Fantastic. What do you do? I'll show you. You'll show me. If you remove the pupa too soon, it'll look like this. Green and not yet ready to eat. But if you remove it at the exact right time, you'll have a robust, still writhing, squirming, mahogany brown pupa eager to be consumed. Soon. These look terrifying. Very terrifying. I've had pupa before. So the first time I ever tried it, I was in Korea. They call it bandegi. They were a lot smaller and more notably, they weren't moving. This is my first time seeing them this close. It's shocking. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I thought. I just thought the cocoon was like life support. I thought we we're taking them off oxygen when we pull them out of the cocoon, but clearly they can still live. They can't become a moth. No. Can they? No. They can. So from here, they would just die. Yeah. Brutal. I mean, at this point, they don't even have eyeballs anymore. Like, what even is this? Can you eat it like this? Yes. Really? Can we eat it like this? Yes, I can. Let's see it. Oh my God. Nice. Strong composition, this man here. Do you need water? No. Water's for the weak? It's okay. He doesn't look like he enjoyed it, trying to look unaffected. Should we try it too? Same time. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. No. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Don't spit it out, where is it? Is it in your mouth? Yeah. Did you kill it yet? It's moving, right? It's moving! Okay, you gotta bite it! You gotta bite it! Okay, I did. Oh my god, it's so juicy! <laughs> okay. That's like swallowing a vitamin. That was really juicy, gushy, not gooey. It's almost watery inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, on a hot day, that might be refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's like a grape but not sweet. There's like a leathery shell on the outside, and yeah. as soon as you get through that, like yes. a balloon. It has an aftertaste, I think. A bit woody. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That one scared me a little bit. I've had a lot of bugs, but man, this is a first for me. It's great to try it raw, but from here, I think we should try the cooked version. And you have one more insect to show us as well. Let's see. Cooking is underway. First, the pupae, the plural of pupa, are boiled. As they cook, these ladies stand by for the next step. This is wild. First of all, I thought they were just gonna cook the whole silkworm pupa, evidently not. So what they're doing right now is they're busting it open and they're taking out a piece that they call the waist. I'm not sure why they don't wanna eat it, but I'm also quite sure I did just eat it a moment ago. It doesn't smell like anything, but evidently that has to absolutely come out. Next, in a pan, add oil, onion, bell pepper, then the shredded pupae. Flavor with salt and turmeric powder. Then cook until you have the courage to eat a full pound of these creatures. I'm curious about a couple things. First of all, we have the pupa here, but we also have the grasshopper. No, we don't? Yeah. We do. We have. Oh, you're saying no, that's correct. No, no, no. Yes, it's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Before devouring our main dish, how about warming up with an appetizer? These guys are not farmed, but found and plucked from nearby rice fields during the harvest season. Did you collect it yourself? No, no, some other guys collect it for me. Oh, you've got people. To prepare, you must mercilessly rip off the grasshopper's six limbs. Then stir fry their bodies until they become crispy. Frying is the best preparation for insects. It makes them crispy, they're not gooey. You don't want to just boil it in water. Cheers. That's yummy. The head is extra crunchy and salty. It's not bad. It's fine for me. I've had this many times. Never in India. Is this something that you can find in a market? No. Why do you think that is? I'm told that you can only find it in homes in the countryside like this. We don't have this in large amount, that's why. Really? Here, he's raising the silkworm, but not grasshoppers. No. Have you ever thought about raising grasshoppers? No, no. How about right now? No. Here, we have, I don't know, five pounds of silkworm pupa. So I went into the kitchen, I saw the ladies preparing this. They had to rip it open to take something out. What did they remove from this pupa? Waste material. When you boil it, then it stays inside. It's not bad, but you have to pick it up. Pick it out. So it's okay if you eat it raw. Mm. It actually smells good. It smells like cooked exactly eggs. Exactly like omelette, yes. Let's go. Wow, it's kind of eggy. It's very good. I can have this. Mm -hmm. 
Not a ton of spices. It just tastes like a little bit of heat, something a little bit spicy and a little bit of salt. Outer layer is chewy though. Yeah, it's still kind of thick, leathery, chewy, and then inside is mushy. How often are you eating pupa? Once in a week. Wow. Actually, there is a weekly market near my house. Ladies from the village come there and they bring this particular thing over there. But I never happen to buy it. Today I'm having it. You live in the city now. How often do you come to the village to see your family? Once a year. Just once a year. From here, I'm actually interested to meet your relative because they also have some very unique food over there. And another bug creature I've never tried before in my life. Right. And I've tried a lot. From Amrit's farm in the town of Salona, Goan, we take a swift 20 minute ride to Gagwa, where Padma's cousin and her extended family live. Through marriage, Padma's family is a mix of Rabha and Karbi people. Today, they'll sacrifice a goat to welcome Padma and in honor of our arrival. With an invitation sent out to neighbors and friends in the form of wafting roasted meats, this one goat will soon become four different dishes. But let's not forget the reason we came here. Here we have a multitude of water beetles. Okay. Yeah. I've never eaten a water beetle in my life. When I was a kid and I grew up in the countryside, we had a kiddie pool. By midsummer, it was green and it was full of these things. But back then, I never thought to eat them. <laughs> right now, I'm not really thinking about eating them either. This is just one of over 2,000 existing water beetle species around the world. These guys in particular are found in smaller bodies of water, like lakes or ponds. These are basically complimentary when they go fishing. I love complimentary. So when people are fishing, yes. if they see some bugs, they just yes. net them. That's wild. I mean, it's super efficient. You're going to get the most protein possible. And if you don't catch any fish, well, hey, you can still eat bugs. These water beetles are in their final adult stage. And the good news is that they're pretty much available throughout the year. Your fingernails match the bug quite nicely. I didn't plan that. Yeah, same palette. But you personally, you have not eaten this before. No, no, I have not. Are you willing to do it? Today I am. Again, guys, this is Indian food. Everything we're eating today, Indian food. Speaking of Indian food, our first goat course will come in the form of a goat curry. But instead of bubbling away in a giant cauldron, this curry is cooked inside bamboo tubes. It starts with pieces of goat meat seasoned in onion, chili, ginger, garlic, salt, cinnamon, cardamom, and curry leaves. Stuff this blend in a bamboo tube before cooking it over a direct flame. The bamboo is loosely sealed with leaves, then roasted until the meat cooks through. Everybody looks stunning. Is this a special occasion? You coming to here is special occasion. They're in their traditional attire. I wish my parents thought it was a special occasion when I dropped by. We have a massive feast right here. Yes. We have a lot of food. And then right here, we have your family member who lives in this village. This is the goat that was cooked inside the bamboo. It's kind of like a way to braise the meat, kind of steaming and boiling, getting soft for hours. Oh, I'm feeling the meat. It's fatty. It smells wild and muttony, but it also smells like curry. Oh yeah. The meat is so tender. It's very delicious. Mmm, a beautiful mix of seasonings. The masala is on point. It's spicy. It's spicy. Do you feel like people eat more spice here in the countryside or in the city? I think it's the same. Ooh, I feel that though. This is just a straight up meat. Over here is a completely different story. Our second dish includes goat intestines. For a bit of extra flavor, mix in a touch of goat blood and other goat organs that have been sliced down into unrecognizable bits. Then boil with a bit of salt. In another pan, fry onions in mustard oil. Add chili, ginger, and salt before inviting in the viscera. It's kind of a grab bag. You don't exactly know what you're getting. I'm just gonna get a big ball of protein and pick them apart one by one. Let's find out. I think that might be lung. It's very spongy. What do you got there? Spongy too, lung. But then here, I think this is stomach. What do you think about this? Better stomach. All right, fantastic. Oh yeah, very different texture. Kind of chewy and crunchy at the same time. And I gotta say, not gamey, but there are so many spices on there. It's really spicy. You're it's making a face. Is it too much spice? <laughs> I think it's too much for me now. So maybe it's spicier in the country, hmm? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Aside from a delightful looking goat head dish, I'm most looking forward to these black crunchy critters. I know you really like bugs. You don't even eat goat. A dish everyone at the table seems to have their eyes on. Can you ask her why she doesn't like goat? She doesn't like the smell of the mutton, but she likes this taste crunchy and fatty. Before they're ready to eat, the live bug wings are liberated from their bodies. Their wings and your fingernails are made from the same stuff, and it's uh, not really enjoyable. Now the beetles are ready to fry in mustard oil with a bit of salt, along with the bonus giant water bug that haplessly swam into the wrong net. We have an array of bugs. I'm gonna save this big one for you. Okay. But first, we should try these, the water beetles. Cooked beautifully, they're shiny, they're glistening. 
Mmm, crunchy. Mm -hmm. crunchy. Salty. Right. Just a little bit of a gush, like a bug paste inside. But not super liquidy. Not like what we had earlier today. This is very manageable. They're actually yummy. These are even better than the grasshoppers. Between the grease and the salt and the crunch, it's very similar to popcorn. This, a water bug. They taste like apple. I've had this many times in my life before. Here's an example. See, did you see the example? I think I did. You'd bite it in half? Oh god, uh-huh. The smell, like a perfume. Exactly, it's your first time experiencing it, Yes. Right? Does it taste fruity at all? A Little bit fruity, yes. Overall, are you glad you tried it or is it disgusting? I won't have it again. What I find so interesting and peculiar here is that you're both cousins, yes. your family, you're related, but yes. your lives, it seems, couldn't be more different. You only live about an hour apart. Yes. You're in the city, and then she lives here in the village, kind of carrying on these old, old traditions. Do you like the village life more than the busy, bustling city? She likes her village. What do you like about the village? The people can, the farming she does, and her animals. For you, how do you feel when you come out here? The air is more fresh, and of course, the people are more friendly. So what's stopping you from moving in? Opportunity. Do you treasure some of the customs that are still held here? Yeah, yeah. In fact, my mother is very strict about when we go to occasions, we only wear the traditional attire. You know, there's many people like you, young, motivated, looking for opportunities. And so more and more people leave the village. But one day, if everyone goes to the city, there's nothing to come back to. I was concerned about it like a few years ago, but then I have seen this new wave of preserving the culture. Even the young ones I see are very passionate about their own culture. They're promoting it online, everywhere. Interesting. Oddly enough, technology is a way that people are able to preserve the culture and keep it moving forward. I want to say thank you to everyone. Donya Bhatt, thank you. You're welcome. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Was that your goat that we slaughtered this morning? Uh-uh. It was her goat. Not anymore. Um, I'm sorry, were you attached to that goat? Uh, what is it? She fed her. <laughs> Every day. Oh my god. But it is tasty, she's saying. That's right. Silver lining. They're very delicate. They don't bite, right? No. It's cute though. It's very cute. It's soft and squishy. And if you make a wrong move, <laughs> they're gonna splat everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And they cannot come back from that. Water. Masala. Ohoru ada. Is that all the ingredients? Yes, okay. exactly. I've had many different types of beetles. I've even had dung beetles. Oh wow. Do you know what that is? I wouldn't know that. Do you know where they live? No. Dumb. I don't want to try that. You just eat the beetles and they eat the sh Do they put fresh chilies or chili powder? Their own uh, produce. They grew them? Yes, they have. Uh oh, were you close to these chilies? <laughs> <laughs> if I ask a really dumb question, you don't have to translate it. Boom! Guys, that is the end of this video here in Assam. Soon, we're going to be moving on to the state of Nagaland and things are really going to get crazy. Please, if you like it, then that's great. Don't do anything. Otherwise, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. All right, cool.